This video will demonstrate how to prepare an aggregate plan under a number of different cost and production rate models. This video is also a continuation of the aggregate planning one video, which related to problem 13.3 in your text. The questions covered in this video relate to problems 13.4, 13.5, and 13.6. Let's start with problem 13.4, which is a continuation of problem 13.3 and uses the same original set of data. In this case, we're going to use that information to develop a second plan, plan B, and produce at a constant rate of 1,400 units per month to meet minimum demands. Then the company will use subcontracting with additional units at a premium price of $75 per unit. We're asked to evaluate this plan by computing the costs for January through August. Let's begin by determining what items constitute costs over and above any normal production. In this case, using subcontracting will prevent any need for either hiring workers or laying off workers. Therefore, we only have two applicable costs in this case, the inventory holding cost at $20 per unit per month and subcontracting at $75 per unit. We'll go ahead and create a table, this time with only five columns. The first one has the period and the second demand. The third column in blue identifies what the production will be. The fourth column will identify how many units in ending inventory, and the fifth column in orange will identify how many subcontract units are required. For our first line, I've also added in here the inventory at the end of December. If we start with January, the demand is 1,400 units, and monthly production will be 1,400 units, which is the requirement to meet the minimum demand, since the lowest level of demand in the entire eight-month period is 1,400 units. This will result in 200 units in ending inventory in January. The 200 units from December plus 1,400 produced minus 1,400 demanded. Since there's ending inventory, there will be no need to subcontract. In February, demand is 1,600 units, production is 1,400, and ending inventory will be zero by taking 200 units in ending inventory from January, adding 1,400 production minus 1,600 demanded results in zero inventory and also zero subcontract costs. In March, demand is 1,800 and production is 1,400. There is no beginning inventory, so we would result in a stock out of 400 units, which we'll make up using subcontracting. For April, the amounts are the same, 1,800 demanded, 1,400 produced, no beginning inventory, so the company will have to subcontract another 400 units. May, 2,200 demand, 1,400 production, again, no inventory to start with, therefore the company will end up having to make up with 800 units of subcontracting, the same in June, since the demand and production is the same, so another 800 units of subcontracting. In July, demand is a bit lower at 1,800 units, production at 1,400, still no ending inventory, and the 1,400 unit production is short of demand, so another 400 units of subcontract is required. And then finally for August, 1,400 units demanded is equal to the 1,400 produced, resulting in no inventory and no subcontracting. Therefore, if we look at our totals for inventory holding costs, we only have 200 units over the entire eight month period, and that was in January. Be careful not to include the green December ending inventory in the calculation. And if you multiply that by the $20 holding cost, that's $4,000 in inventory holding costs over the eight month period. And then subcontracting, when we add up all of the subcontracted required, that's 2,800 units at a cost of $75 per unit. That's a total of $210,000. Therefore, the total cost for plan B is $214,000. Now onto problem 13.5. Here, Hill is now considering plan C, again using the same information that we were using starting in problem 13.3. Plan C keeps a stable workforce by maintaining a constant production rate equal to the average requirements and allows varying inventory levels. That means our costs in this case are only inventory holding costs, and stock out costs. The holding cost is still $20 per unit and the stock out cost is $100 per unit. Since there's only two costs, we'll only have a total of five columns. The first two being period and demand. The third column now being the production, but this time production is based on the average of all the demand over the eight month period. The fourth column will show our ending inventory in units and the fifth column in orange, how many units the company will stock out by. We begin with 200 units in inventory at the end of December. For January, demand is 1,400 units, production is 1,775. That results in ending inventory of 575 units, that's 200 beginning plus 1,775 produced minus 1,400 demanded. And because we have excess inventory, there is no stock out. For February, 1,600 demanded, resulting in ending inventory of 750. That's 575 plus 1,775 production minus 1,600 sold. March, 
1,800 units demanded, resulting in 725 units in ending inventory. April, another 1,800 units again, this time resulting in inventory of 700 units. That's 725 plus 1,775 produced minus 1,800 sold. May, with 2,200 units demanded, our inventory drops a little bit to 275, so it's 700 plus 1,775 minus 2,200. Still no stock costs. In June, however, demand is still 2,200, but with production at 1,775, now we're short 150 units. And that's 275 in beginning inventory plus 1,775 produced in June minus 2,200. In July, production is 1,775 and demand is 1,800. There is no beginning inventory to draw from. Therefore, the company will stock out by 25 units. And then August, 1,400 demanded, 1,775 produced. This will result in ending inventory of 375 units. If we look at our total costs now, for inventory holding costs, over the eight month period, the company ended up holding 3,400 units in inventory at a cost of $20 per unit per month for a total of 68,000 in holding costs. And the company only stocked out in two months, June and July, resulting in 175 units stocked out times $100 per unit, 17,500. Therefore, the total cost for plan C is $85,500. And now onto problem 13.6, which covers two additional mixed strategies. Requirement A focuses on plan D, which is keeping the workforce stable at producing 1,600 units per month. This option also permits a maximum of 20% overtime at additional cost of $50 per unit. And the warehouse now constrains the maximum allowable inventory on hand to be 400 units or fewer. So in this case, we have to make sure that our inventory doesn't go above 400 units. If you put together our table, the only additional costs over and above the production costs for this plan include overtime, inventory, and stockouts. Again, we begin showing the 200 units in inventory at the end of December, which we then add to January's production and then of 1,600 units and then subtract demand of 1,400 units to end up with 400 units in any inventory. That carries over to February, where we add another 1,600 units of production, less the 1,600 units demanded, resulting in the same amount of ending inventory at 400 units. Then we go into March and add 1,600 units of production and subtract 1,800 units sold to give us 200 units in ending inventory. Into April, that 200 units gets added to 1,600 units of production, less 1,800 sold, resulting in zero inventory. In May, production is 1,600 units, but demand is 2,200, so we're short 600 units. So we can use overtime, but that's limited to only 320 units, resulting in a stockout of 280 units. And the same thing happens for June as well. 320 units of overtime and 280 units stocked out. In July, production is 1,600, demand is 1,800, so we're 200 units short, which we can make up with overtime, resulting in no ending inventory and no stockouts. And then in August, production is 1,600 units, demand is 1,400, resulting in inventory of 200 units. Determining our total costs, we have a total of 840 units produced in overtime at $50 per unit for a total of 42,000. Inventory, a total of 1,200 units over the eight-month period held in inventory at $20 for a total of $24,000. And over the eight-month period, only 560 units stocked out times $100 is $56,000. When we add those all up, the total cost of Plan D is $122,000. And the final plan, E, is to keep the current workforce, again producing 1,600 units per month, and then subcontract the rest to meet demand. In this case, the only additional costs over and above production are just any inventory and subcontracted units. Since the level of production is the same as the Plan D option, all the months January through April are exactly the same as the previous option. You can stop the video and review the calculations for all the ending inventory if you like. Going into May, production is 1,600, demand is 2,200, resulting in 600 units short, which instead of going into overtime for, the company will subcontract out 600 units. The same thing in June, since there's no inventory and the company needs an additional 600 units to meet demand, that will be subcontracted. In July, production is 1,600, demand is 1,800, company is 200 units short, which you will get from subcontractors. And then finally, August would be the same as Plan D, 200 units of ending inventory. In this plan, the total holding cost of inventory is the same as Plan D at 24000 and the cost of subcontracting will be 1,400 subcontracted units at $75 for a total of 105000 Therefore, the total cost of Plan E is $129,000. 
And if we put together a summary of the five different plans that we covered, plan A was Chase with varying workforce. Its total cost was 191,000. Plan B, constant production with, to meet minimum demand of 1,400 units. And that was with subcontracting. The cost for that option was 214,000. Plan C was constant production based on the average demand. So that was 1,775 units. And then relying on stockouts. The total cost of that option was 85,000. And then D and E constant production at 1,600 units, either with overtime or subcontracting. And those costs were 122,000 and 129,000 respectively. As it turns out, with the different plans that we reviewed, plan C, which is the constant production based on average demand, and then risking stockouts, ended up being the lowest cost option at 85,000.